What's up, dudes? So we're back to take another look at the Spark. Um, I thought we would take a look at the bass. That's one thing I didn't cover in the first video. And the acoustic. And I can also tell you a little bit about how um, it worked with Android, which was a little spotty. So, uh, And there are some other features I can show you on the iPad that I've picked up over the past week. So the first thing um, we can look at is uh, some of the bass patches. <laughs> Um, there was only two installed, you know, on the local uh, iPad. So I went online and I downloaded a few more uh, like this. Make sure I'm all the way up here. All right, so there's a few samples. Um, one of the things I noticed is that none of the backing tracks seem to be really geared for bass. They seem to be all geared for guitar. It really is a guitar practice amp. So I found <clears throat> a lot of those backing tracks, in fact, all of the backing tracks had bass, right? There were none that were just meant for bass soloing over, so... Uh, that's just something to keep in mind. I think bass is a nice thing, a little add-on that they, they could put in, but I don't think it's quite the focal point. I think the thing sounds great, but I wouldn't use this like with a band. I don't think it'll be loud enough, and I'd be worried about hurting the speakers. This is more of a practice amp, especially uh, for bass. All right, let me go grab uh, an acoustic, and we'll check out a few of the acoustic patches. All right, we're back. I grabbed an acoustic. <laughs> Um, and we have a few of the uh, stock patches here. And much like the bass, there was only two, only two patches uh, built into the uh, stock software. So I just went up to the cloud and I just downloaded a bunch more just to have a few to check out. So that's Cozy Serenade. And that's, that's one of the stock. one of the stock um, patches. Good. Uh, the next one is Studio Session. Uh, it adds a chorus. <laughs> and then um, this is one I downloaded from the cloud. It's just called Acoustic Piezo. 
kind of a small room. I think the first two had a lot more reverb going on. <clears throat> and then I think this one has some, might have some delays. I think it sounds pretty good. Cozy serenade. It feels more like it's a cave serenade. All right. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was some of the features that I sort of just picked up as my use increased with the product. So I want to correct something from the first video. In the first video, I thought the output was like the master output for everything. It's not. It's only the master output for the guitar amp. Right. The smaller knob marked music volume is actually the music volume knob. And it's indep they're, they're independent of each other. So um, also, I confirmed that the uh, auxiliary is an auxiliary in. And so this knob up here will control Bluetooth playback audio. Audio auxiliary in audio, right? The auxiliary in audio. And any audio you're getting back from the USB source. So, like, if you uh, were using it as an interface and you, you were using the Spark as your monitors, basically, a set of stereo speakers as a monitor, you're listening back to what you played in the computer, um, this would control that, that volume. That, that output volume, the, the smaller knob in the back, not the output knob. That's only for the amp. Um, what else? Another thing I wanted to show you on here that I didn't quite fully understand, but I have a better uh, handle on it now, and that is with the smart jams. I couldn't get it to play other than, like, really pretty much the same smart jam over and over and over again. It's a little frustrating. It's like every time I press the smart jam button, Am I really getting, like, the same Smart Jam? No. No, I'm not. <laughs> I just, I, you know, it's a learning curve. It, this isn't in the manual, by the way. This is just something I figured out just by uh, joy tapping, right, and messing around and, and pressing everything. If I click blues, it's the same. That's the same one that it always plays, this one in C. To change it, you just tap this little one of these arrows up at the top. Whole new tune. New pace. Again, click it again. I got it. There it goes. Whole different tempo. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, this looks like it's in G. Hold whole new key. All the genres are like that. All right. One thing I will say about the Smart Jam 
is that it's a little spotty on Android. So since making the first video, which I only use the iPad, I tried my old, and it, admittedly, it's a really old, my old Nexus from um, Google, right? My Google Nexus from 2013. It has Android 6 on it. The current version of Android is Android 10. And how they handled it were, were you know, very different. If I had to guess, I would say that I believe Android 10, that sounds like MIDI to me, right? I'll bet, I know that Android 10, they rewrote their MIDI system. I'll bet it's just an effect that it can't talk to it. So on Android 10, smart jams don't work. But on Android 6, they do work. Right? So it really just depends on your version. Um, with Android 6, the backing tracks wouldn't automatically play. Android 10, they would. Right? Again, just one little difference. Um, also, with Android versus um, iOS, iOS has a landscape mode. Um, I could not get it to go landscape on Android. It was port locked to portrait no matter whether it was Android 6 or Android 10, either way. And one other last thing about Android. When I connected um, with Android 6, it couldn't get the... Um, Android subsystem to connect through Bluetooth automatically. And that's been a problem on that machine for about a year and a half now. But a year and a half ago, Android rewrote how you connect uh, to the subsystem for both Wi-Fi, because I also use it to control uh, my GoPro camera and my Panasonic camera. And I noticed that all of a sudden it couldn't control the Wi-Fi anymore to connect. I had to connect manually. And the same thing was, was with Bluetooth. On Android 6, I had to manually connect through Bluetooth using Android's settings. It wouldn't, I couldn't do it through the software. On Android 10, when I clicked on it, right on my phone, it popped up a little window. Do you want to connect? I said yes, and boom, it connected right away. So the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. So on Android 10, the MIDI system doesn't seem to be working right now. And again, I believe that was redesigned for Android 10. Uh, it works fine on 6. But on 6, like, I can't get it to automatically connect, and it won't automatically play the videos where that does work on Android 10. So the reality is is that they're, they seem to be um, more in beta than on iOS for, for Android. Um, or, you know, it, it's a much more difficult platform to program for because of the hardware footprints are so different. Right? It's, it really is. It really is a much harder platform. One other thing um, I wanted to show you, I'm trying to remember here, um, collecting my thoughts. Yeah, one other thing I wanted to show you is this third button here. I didn't really get this at first. I didn't understand why these recently played was here until I started going back and wanting to play with the same track again. So I would go down to blues, I'd be like, oh, where's that, where's that blues track I was playing? And I'd be like scrolling through trying to find the the blues track with recently played i can set up right these are all my recently played you know, tracks and i can just work off this short little list and that's real easy when you want to go back and jam to the same song over and over and over again um, that's huge also i can confirm that all the devices android and ipad um, they all would connect just straight up as a bluetooth speaker even when the amp was on even when I was just controlling the amp through hardware and not even have the, the software up, I could load up Amazon Music and play, a, I can't play it now because it's copyrighted, a copyrighted song on this, and I could adjust the volume through this volume up here, and I could jam along with it, that, that work. So one last thing. Someone was asking about foot switch functionality. Right now, no, there is no foot. You can't plug a foot switch into the USB or anything like that. But as we both know, it's Bluetooth, right? It's got a full Bluetooth, um, you know, receiver in it that can handle two streams, one to handle the audio from any device and one to handle working the amp, the amp control. That's a whole other Bluetooth stream. Adding another stream, a foot switch stream, seems to be doable to me, but it's just a matter of development. Um, 
We'll see. All right, dudes. Well, there you have it. As always, thanks so much for hanging out. I'll leave uh, links down in the description. And rock on. <laughs>